Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from Totally Not Mark. <laughs> I'm gonna get so much grief for this video. But we are checking out Dragon Ball vs. One Piece, which is better. Now I'm hoping that this is gonna be the video finally <laughs> that gets me finally getting into the. <laughs> So I really want to get into One Piece, I really do. And I'm thinking, right, this could be the video that finally tips me over the edge. That gets me actually into One Piece. And then I check out the Totally Not Mark reviews. <laughs> but until then, let's see what Totally Not Mark thinks on Dragon Ball versus One Piece. Which is better. Goku, Luffy! You son of a bitch! <laughs> nice. New school or old school? Dragon Ball? My God! <laughs> they are juggernauts. There you go. <laughs> Damn. Yep, you really have. And you reviewed pretty much. There you go. Dragon yeah, because you're huge into it. Just doing reviews of One Piece. Everyone says. Mm, go on, so go on. Which is better? Sit back and get ready to argue in the comments section because today I will be comparing two of the most legendary shonen stories to have ever made their way to the West. Today I try to answer the age-old question: Which is better, One Piece or Dragon Ball? Oh my God! <laughs> Sick. Whoa. Oh my god. Uh. In the red corner, a returning champion standing strong with 519 chapters to its name, alongside its main man G that dons the orange key, we have a Kiritori on the 1980s, martial arts adventure manga, Dragon Ball. And in the blue the corner, orange the current reigning champion with a remarkable 1,005 chapters and counting it's a lot. to its name, The straw hat that's all that. Manga, one piece. Which is better? Well, first of all, we gotta figure out what does better mean. Hmm. One property could have better characters, while another has better visuals or story or sales, etc. Yeah. So, in order to determine which of these sits atop this mountain, for me, I have to devise a list of topics for each franchise to battle with it. Right, and so then do a whole thing at the end. Sales. sales. Ooh. Where better to start this entirely subjective contest than with an objective metric? Stocks. Manga sales are something that are easily measured, and in this instance, the yes, because there is a number. One Piece comfortably sits atop this mountain as the best-selling manga series ever created. Yeah. However, it did so after dethroning Dragon Ball, who had up until that point been at the top spot for well over a decade. Interesting. And even as I write this, Dragon Ball, despite having finished in 1996, is still in the number two spot, right beneath One Piece. Whoa. But you might be thinking. Whoa. One has been in serialization for over 20 years, and that's sort of an unfair advantage if you consider the fact that Dragon Ball's lifespan was only 11. So, in other huh. words, in order to see which was truly the best seller of its time, let's see how 11 years of One Piece sales stack up when compared to the oh 11 years of Dragon Ball. Oh my god. <laughs> and the results to this were honestly shocking. Mostly because no one seems to know when One Piece overtook Dragon Ball. No. This monumentally important moment in pop culture history seems to have been lost to the webs of time. That's People weird. always say One Piece is the highest selling manga and that it overtook Dragon Ball to achieve that. But, but when? no one seems to know when it huh. happened. It just That's happened really weird. sometime vaguely between 2005 and 2015. Yeah, like what, within a 10 year... Yeah. 
before, and to be honest, at this point, I wanted to try to figure this out for the internet, and I did find an answer eventually. Huh. This took over five hours of research. That's so weird. Why? Translation websites, the asking of admins of various fan sites, and I even scoured through the web for any articles on the topic dating back as far as 2010. And spoiler alert, there weren't any. Thanks to the weird Japanese translation website, I was able to learn that by the year 2000, Dragon Ball had sold over 126 million copies. Right, of Jesus pocket. Christ. This means that it had sold less than that by the time it ended in 1996. Hmm. And since One Piece started in 1997, now all I needed to do was find the late 2000s total worldwide sales figures for One Piece. That's all this you had to do. to be near impossible. Oh my God. There was an ocean of articles talking about seemingly every other achievement or milestone that One Piece attained, but not the achievement. That's so weird. Reason, no one was talking about this. I had honestly no idea <laughs> Charlie no one ever on. documented this information for easy to find consumption online. In my despair, as a last ditch effort, I sent out a tweet to all of you. To be frank, I was ready to scrap the video entirely. Oh god. But then, amidst the dozens of questionable sources sent my way, one very old web domain was submitted. It was from 2008, exactly 11 years after One Piece was released. Hands shaking in anticipation, I frantically scrolled down the page past all the useless information, and then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw it. I swear, if my fiancé wasn't sitting right next to me as I write this, I'd tell you all that this was the single most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I have this fine individual to thank. Some heroes don't wear capes. Thank you. At Bweezy Bird, Bweezy Bird. you're doing God's work. With this vital missing piece of the puzzle, I could then confirm, I think perhaps for the first time on YouTube it feels like, and definitively say that One Piece dethroned Dragon Ball in 2009. Nine, but right. more importantly, not only has One Piece sold more than Dragon Ball, but it also did so in a much shorter span of time. In 11 years, Dragon Ball managed to sell somewhere under 126 million copies. Right. And in that same time, One Piece sold 140 oh, million. Oh, damn. That's how you heard it here first, folks. The first point goes to One, One Piece. Piece. The story. Dragon Ball and One Piece are both kings of the shonen realm, but there's only room for one true king in terms of story. You know One Piece so is going to get the story, even though I haven't seen the story, because it's got such an ongoing, amazing, like, story. Whereas Dragon Ball has, like, individual story bits that don't necessarily need to be seen from the beginning. You could jump into any bit of Dragon Ball, can't you? They are stories, first and foremost, so how does One Piece measure up to Dragon Ball mm. in that respect? I love Dragon, Dragon Ball, don't get me wrong. It's largely straightforward with its moments of interest coming from character interactions and choices. It explores interesting themes through characters like Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, and Gohan, among many others, and has produced some of the cornerstone moments in anime culture as a whole. Yeah. For me, the strongest stretch in the series spans from the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai up until the climax to the Freeze of Goku fight. There are a lot of great moments both before and after this, but for me, the writing in the series was always at its strongest during this portion. The dialogue was quippy, the motivations were strong, and it's one brilliant and iconic scene after the next. However, with that said, One Piece has been ongoing for over 20 years and is still producing yeah. top-tier material today. I'm even of the opinion that the current arc of One Piece, Wano, is in the running for the best arc the series has ever produced. Yeah. Having only now recently looked back over the reviews I made for One Piece, it's remarkable how often the show would surprise me and how brilliant Oda is for planting seeds and structure. I mean, for people to be hyped about it still, the it's like the story must be... famously did not do this with Dragon Ball, Ur instead Ur opting to make it up as he went. One Piece does have its low points, but even taking them into consideration, putting them side by side, there's way, way more going on on a narrative level in the world Oda created. Hmm. I love Dragon Ball's story, but in this case, it's not even close. This is to take nothing away from Dragon Ball, as it did a lot of amazing things, but One Piece has set a whole new standard. And because of this, I gotta give One the Piece point to One Piece. Point. The visuals. While the story makes up a massive portion of most shonen, many are often defined by the reception to their action set pieces and visuals. And now that I've become a reviewer of sorts, one of my biggest fears when picking up a new manga to critique is that its layouts and artwork will prove to be less helpful and more of an obstruction standing in the way of me understanding the story. Yeah. Manga is a visual medium first and foremost, and if you don't make use of the visuals, you may as well have written a book. In yeah, it may as well just be a novel, yeah. Manga for vastly different reasons. However, for me, I hold paneling, clarity, and art in extremely high regard and i've mentioned this but again some of the hunter hunter panels are just like just Dragon so Ball much text sometimes it's like what standard in this department if you haven't read dragon ball and only 
watched it, I highly recommend opening a random page from the series to observe how. Yeah, I make Dan always like says like you should just check out the original Dragon Ball and the Dragon Ball Z mangas because they are class. He's got them all like. I'm enjoying the super manga, but don't get me wrong, it's not quite got what the Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z manga had. Really? Many sections of its serialization. And let it be known that this isn't a bias for Dragon Ball shining through here either. While I heavily praise the original run so of Dragon Ball, Patch, what's like saying that like the way that the manga was done for One Piece was incredible? Well like someone falling and to show how fast he fell was like panel, panel, panel. However, even taking and then the breaks in between the panels made it seem as if it was slowing down and, or speeding up, that kind of thing. There we go, visuals for Dragon Ball then, fair enough. Yeah, Kyrie Toriyama's got something good with the panel anyway. Now what? Main characters. Here we go. One of the most surprising aspects for me while I was writing this video was how definitive I felt about almost every topic. When it came to sales, story, and visuals, all of these aspects I had come to a conclusion on prior. I just needed to formulate my thoughts more clearly on them. However, this one was by far the most difficult section to both articulate hmm. my feelings on and ultimately make a decision for. This is probably due to the nostalgic nature I hold Dragon Ball in. Yeah, it's like growing up with that, it must be quite difficult, it must cloud year, like what you're actually I had to make a decision trying to do. Damn. But before you set my channel on fire, allow me to explain myself. One Piece is directly inspired by Akira Toriyama's yeah. Dragon Ball. And because of this, both Luffy and Goku share a ton of traits in common with each other, both from the energy they exhibit in pursuing their goals to their tenacity and their love for their friends. They right. definitely and have food. more in common <laughs> than they have aspects that are distinct, if you ask me. However, in the small ways that they are different, I managed to formulate my decision. Through interviews, Akira Toriyama has come out and saying that a fundamental piece of Goku's personality that people often don't recognize is the small but very present poison in his character. This is the aspect of Goku's personality that will lead him to pursue the story in a really fun and interesting ways. However, it will also oftentimes lead him to pursue dangerous circumstances He's in a much more safe and stable life for his family and friends. He will give a sense of being to sell. He will stay dead for long longer to get more training in. He will routinely leave and alienate himself from his family and friends in search of better fights. Yeah, the ending to Dragon Ball's original run, while I thought it was fitting for the series, still felt strange to discover that Goku didn't keep in touch with almost anyone in his life. And for me, that aspect of his personality can be frustrating or It is a bit annoying, though. It's like, what? Times. Luffy, on the other hand, doesn't share this trait at all. Instead, motivated to keep his friends safe and to reach his goal, too. And I think if you were to ask Luffy to choose between never seeing his friends again and becoming king of the pirates, I think he'd make he, yeah. the decision without even thinking. However, when it comes to Goku, if you ask him to choose between seeing his friends again have and to think about it. the strongest person in the universe, I really think you'd have to think about mm. it for a second. As a character, Goku, I think, is phenomenal and offers a nuance that still escapes many of the modern writers today in Super and its manga. However, on numerous occasions, Luffy has demonstrated a straightforward purity that has moved me to tears more times than I care to count. And for that reason, as well as what I've said here, I have to give the point to Luffy and One Piece. Wow, One Piece is winning this. Supporting characters. Oh. Unlike the last section, one Piece seems to have such a ma like huge cast of characters though. Supporting characters, but also has some of my favorite characters in all of fiction. Vegeta Piccolo, is incredible. Uh, Gohan, Vegeta, Tenshinhan, Mr. Satan, all of these are iconic in their own way and offer vastly different dynamics to the story yeah, at large. Definitely. However, Dragon Ball is let down in one fundamental aspect, and that's that the supporting cast a lot of the time either becomes irrelevant yep. or they become something that the whole power creeping thing, they just stay behind. On the other hand, has arcs of story dedicated to each of the Straw Hat Pirates as Luffy meets and befriends all of them. In addition hmm. to that, Eichiro Oda goes to tremendous lengths to not only include these characters consistently, but also makes them essential and fundamental aspects to the victories Luffy ultimately achieves in them. Over 1,000 chapters later, and characters like Zoro, Nami, Usopp, and Sanji are all still just as crucial today as they were back then. Perhaps even more so. And that is something I can absolutely not say for the likes of Yamcha, yeah. Tenshin, they just stay behind. This one goes to One Piece. Damn, One Piece like some of the side got a this. Ball, but overall, One Piece dominates this section. The villains. 
where one hmm. piece's conflicts are strongly defined and spawn from how Luffy and his crew deal with the circumstances brought on by their respective villains, Dragon Ball is practically defined by, by the villains. villains yeah. Each subsequent threat even informing the name of that given saga of the story. The Saiyan saga, the Frieza saga, the Cell saga, etc. The Boo saga, some yeah. amazing antagonists and villains like Blackbeard and the world government, but those are still very much unknown quantities at this moment, so for that reason I will omit them in this conversation. However, Oof. even if I were to include them in my decision, it's still the same. My favorite villains from the world of One Piece are the likes of Arlong, Enel, Crocodile, and Doflamingo. These are all great in their own respects, but when I compare them to the likes of Piccolo, Vegeta, Frieza, and Cell, a clearer picture starts to emerge. One Piece's villains a lot of the time are quite complex and offer a lot in the way of their narrative. However, if I go off which I would be more excited to see, Crocodile or Frieza, Enel or Vegeta, in my opinion, it's a no-brainer. Right, yeah, yeah. like everything else, Fair it enough. boils down to personal preference, but in my opinion, the point has to go to Dragon Ball for having the better villains. Cultural impact. When it comes to domestic Japanese Ooh, this is going to be a tough one. Jesus Christ. In 2015, I went to Japan with my friends. Cultural to place impact. For the first time, and upon arriving, I was absolutely Every away convention I've been to, the stuff from both of these franchises everywhere. Then again, West is like saying there are a couple of trees oh. in the Amazon. It's a massive understatement. However, when we leave the sheltered shores in the land of the like rising even sun, even KSI is like freaking world, rapping about bears and stuff. Squashes one piece. <laughs> to help put it into perspective, Dragon Ball is so impossibly ubiquitous globally that the only other Japanese properties to do better than it on a world stage are the likes of Hello Kitty, Pokemon. Mario, and Pokemon. Yeah. There's a reason why Goku was chosen as the main ambassador for the 2020 Olympic Hell Games yeah. over the likes of Naruto, Sailor Moon, Mario, and even Luffy himself. The broad and far-reaching appeal of the Dragon Ball franchise is something that can be felt the world over. Whether it be referenced in popular internet videos, parades, American cartoons, rap lyrics, or even, as I said, the Olympic yeah, Games. Yeah, man. Both from an optics and sales perspective, Dragon Ball gets the definitive win in the cultural impact section. Accessibility. One of the drawbacks hmm. of how strong the One Piece story is, is how involved it can be. Which is often the reason why many are afraid to jump into the adventure at first. While I was working with Dragon Ball, you can jump in at any time. This is a weird one. How daunting of an enterprise starting and jumping into One Piece can be. It's fantastic. It is awesome. I've bought the first nine volumes then. Volume I've had them for ages and I've only read the first two chapters of the volume one. Is also another long running anime and manga. Or is it? Maybe I've more read more than two chapters. But you know what I mean? I've only got, like, hardly into it. I think I need to do myself, like, weekly goals and just do certain chapters so often. Yeah, you can. Could just watch it. <laughs> My dad got caught up in it and he didn't even know what anime was. And it was during this time too when I first started watching the series. Like most people in the West, I jumped in halfway through the series and loved it all the same. Some of you out there might be saying that accessibility isn't important, however, I think it's hard to discredit it because in reality, how accessible something is plays a large role into its ultimate success in connecting yeah, definitely, people like, around the world. It's probably why it's, it's so like Appealing all over the place, yeah. Which one wins this section? Dragon Ball takes the point here. And with that, we have a tie. Four points for Dragon Ball and four points for One Piece. This can't end in a tie, and so I needed a tiebreak. I decided to, instead of creating another topic for these guys to be compared in, earlier this week, I decided to post two polls to see which one you all preferred. One on my Twitter, and another on my YouTube channel, and between them, over 100,000 votes were cast by fans across the globe. And the winner was One Piece. One Piece wins this time, but I think that's going to be something that's ever changing between them. 
This is, after all, a property that has both an anime and manga currently in circulation. Yeah. However, even in saying that, for these two titans of the industry to contend so feverishly with one another shouldn't be held as a slight to either, but instead a testament to how fantastic and fundamentally brilliant both of these yeah, franchises truly definitely, are definitely, and definitely. how much everyone seems to love and respect them. In the past, I've gone on the record during various podcasts stating that I think that comparing these is almost impossible, that they're just too different, and while on some level are similar and occupy the same industry, both try to achieve extremely different things with vastly different approaches in design philosophy. But I decided to ignore that and make this video because I thought it might be fun. And in the end, One Piece won thanks to the popularity it has to this day. However, 50 years ago, this was the cutting edge standard for Japanese storytelling, and today it looks like this. Our standards for what qualifies as better are constantly changing, changing but it all the time. Yeah. an interesting question, I think, for me to leave you all with today. In 25 years, after One Piece is finished, will it still be as popular as it is now? Hmm. Will it have the same staying power that Dragon Ball has proven to have? Only time will tell, but until then... I've been Toy Not Mark, and thank you all so much for watching. So One Piece won. I really do need to just like just get into it. I really, 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 really do. Uh, <laughs> and you're all gonna have a go at me in the comments section like you always do. And it's uh, why do I do this to myself? But um, there we go. I thought that was quite fair. I mean, I can't really give an opinion on the One Piece stuff, just from what I've seen, what I've heard, things get thrown around. I thought it was really weird that it found, found it so hard to find when One Piece surpassed Dragon Ball, but he got there happy. That was a good video. I will sometime get onto the Totally Not Mark reviews, but he's going to be reviewing Hunter Hunter soon and I want to watch all those, so who knows, hey. If One Piece is that good, it's definitely worth waiting for then, isn't it? That's my excuse. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. That's all you guys next time.